another video on the introduction of corresponding angles. And this, this phrase comes up a lot in um, middle and high school. And it's referring to angles, I guess I'll, I'll say it and then I'll show it, angles that are in the same relative position at an intersection. And the intersection is usually of a transversal and, and well, at least two lines, I'll say. I think that makes sense, yes. Two lines. It could be more than two lines. And I'll show some examples. So let's say we have this line right here and this line. And they're parallel. Let's call this L and M. So they're, despite my drawing, let's say they're parallel. They're never going to run into each other. Now transversal is just a line that, that cuts across those two parallel lines. I could draw that anywhere. Let's say I draw it here. Now corresponding angles have the same relative position at the intersection. What do I mean? Well, these points here are the points of intersection. And here we have angles 1, 2, 3, and 4. Those are the, the four angles surrounding that intersection. And we can do the same thing down here with 5, 6, 7, and 8. Well, corresponding angles have the same relative position. So 5 and 1 correspond. They're both in the upper right position at the intersections. And then 8 and 4 correspond because they're in the lower right position at the intersections. And, well, 6 and 2 correspond. They're in the same relative position. And 3 and 7 correspond. Now what's nice is that if, if L and M are parallel, we might talk about this in other videos, then corresponding angles are all equal. So if L is parallel to M, then all corresponding angles are equal, or we'd say congruent. Congruent, right, meaning equal, but in a different actual position. And um, corresponding angles, well, actually, no, let me just say this. Um, this actually is very intuitive. It's hard, I think it's hard to prove, and, and if I remember correctly, it's, very, it's almost something we have to assume, but it is intuitive, right? If this line, well, let me just show it with it. If we have a, a line right here, and it's parallel to this line right here, well then, whatever way I cut this first line, L, right, and I cut the second line, M, I'm cutting them at the same angles. They're parallel to each other. So it'll have the same effect on both lines, M and L. So let's say I cut this line right here, and this is 40 degrees. Well, doesn't it make sense that this is also 40 degrees? Right, they're the, really the same lines. So they're going to meet this transversal T at the same angle. Even though it's going to be at different positions, they're going to meet at the same angle. And I could keep drawing in other parallel lines, right, as many as I want. As long as they're parallel, then what that means is all these little angles here and here and up here, they're all going to be equal. And so are these ones down here, different color, right? They're corresponding angles in the same relative position. And we can keep going. These green angles would all be equal. It's a very nice feature. Of, of parallel lines and transversals. And there we go. Now you can't assume though that the, the lines are parallel and that all angles are equal because sometimes um, you might just have a line and a line here and then a transversal cutting across. Well in this case on the line, the, the angles you can see are certainly not equal but yet angle 1 still corresponds to angle 2. It's in the same relative position at the intersection. So angle, let's call this 3, corresponds to angle 4. And angle 5 corresponds to angle 6, and so forth. Angle 7 corresponds to angle 8. Right? So here, these corresponding angles are not equal, but they are in the same relative position, like 4 is in the upper right, um, and 3 is in the upper right, in comparison to each of their own relative intersections, where that transversal meets the other lines. And that's what corresponding angles are. Alright, hope that helped.